Here's the latest look at the 8 a.m. advisory on Tropical Storm Laura. The storm has strengthened. A 5 o'clock advisory winds were 65 miles per hour. Now we're talking 70 mile per hour winds. The pressure has dropped 4 millibars, so it's getting stronger. Look at all of that thunderstorm growth that's happening this morning. That's showing up on the red imagery. So Tropical Storm warning still in effect for much of western Cuba. We still have Tropical Storm warnings from the National Hurricane Center for the Dry Tortugas in Florida. Meanwhile, hurricane watches in effect for parts of Texas and Louisiana. And that's going to be the theme with this. Storm is big. Winds extend 175 miles away from the center of this storm, and it's not even a hurricane yet. However, it is on the cusp of a hurricane. Remember, a hurricane is 74 mile per hour winds sustained or greater. We're expected to reach that criteria late this morning or early this afternoon. And then overnight tonight, we're on the cusp of a category two hurricane. So this storm's moving fast. It's going to strengthen fast, making landfall overnight on Wednesday. So less than 48 hours from now, we're talking landfall either in Texas or Louisiana. That landfall point right now, the center of the cone right between Texas and Louisiana. But keep in mind, landfall still possible in Galveston. Landfall still possible as you head closer um, to Lake Charles and to parts of Louisiana. So we have to watch out for either side of its cone to see a landfall. And because the storm is so big, impacts extending way beyond the cone. The storm will quickly weaken as it heads on land, but because it's a fast moving storm, we're still talking about potentially a high end tropical storm as it leaves parts of Texas and Louisiana. So this is going to be something that brings wind threats well beyond the coast, but the biggest wind will happen on the coast. Let's show you the spaghetti models. High pressure nudges in, so absolutely keeping the eastern half of the Gulf of Mexico safe. That's the reason why this storm is nudged so far to the west. You can see there's a lot of consensus, so we know it's going to be this general area, but because this storm is so strong, the most minor changes could bring that landfall point much closer to a big metropolitan area either way people going to see some big impacts. It just depends on where exactly that center is. So let's show you some of the big models. We have our RPM model, the European and the GFS model, all showing a Texas landfall. The latest RPM run actually kind of nudging a little bit away from the cone, but we're still well within the cone with all of these solutions. So that's the one thing to really keep in mind. And also keep in mind that the east side of storms a lot of times have that extra bit of juice, a lot of the tornadic activities on the east side of storms. We're expecting a lot of rainfall with this, especially near the center of this storm. And as it approaches inland, even as it loses those wind characteristics, the European model as well as the GFS model agree that we're going to be seeing some pretty big rainfall totals. But because it's fast moving, the rain isn't going to be the biggest threat threat. So this is something that we're going to be watching very carefully, likely Laura becoming the fourth hurricane of this season, and it's forecasted to be our first major hurricane of a 2020 season, and we've still got a ways to go. I'm meteorologist Alex Calamia.